Hi, uh, we're doing another games I got recently episode. Um, I have like a, I have a lamp behind me. Um, if I didn't have it on, the light coming out out of the window would probably blur out. I'm probably like completely like you wouldn't be able to see my face essentially. Um, but yeah, uh, recently I've accumulated a lot of games, um, and I decided to make a video, and I decided to put. <laughs> I decided to do something else with it, and I ended up not really liking it, and so that's- there's so many reasons why I'm doing this a second time, um, so... So yes, uh, it took me like 40 minutes last time to go through all these games. I don't know if it's gonna be 40 minutes again. Uh, we will see. Last- the first time I recorded this, it was like 30 minutes, so I really don't care. So whatever, whatever, how long it- how long this video is, I really don't care. Um, cause I will, probably would have watched, cause personally I, I would have watched a 30 minute video or a 40 minute video of someone, of someone going through their games. So, yes. Um, what I'm probably gonna do is, how I have them this set up is I'm probably going to go through, uh, modern games first and then, like, go backwards in time, like, a generation, essentially. So, like, for example, we'll, like, start off with things like PS4 and then go to Wii and then go to, uh, PS2. So, It'll be going like backwards. Um, there's also some licensed games that I don't. I know some people want to care about licensed games, so I'm probably gonna do those last. There's some. There, there's some gems in here, and then there's some weird ones in here. Um, Cause I've. I don't know. I really have like a. Really don't have any standards when it comes to video games. <sighs> so yes, um, we're gonna try and go a little quick here, cause I have a lot of stuff that I want to talk about. There's a lot of stuff that I want to go through. Oh, uh, so yeah, we're gonna start off with Switch stuff. I have, I have some Switch stuff, not not really that much compared to last time, but I have some Switch stuff. Uh, first one is what's the one that everyone's going to be talking about, is everyone's talking about right now. I mean, it came out a few months ago, but everyone's still talking about it, and that's Animal Crossing. Um, I have Animal Crossing, yay! Um, when, I, when this was first revealed, I really wasn't that into it, believe it or not. I feel like it changed too much of the Animal Crossing formula. Um, and, uh, but when I started playing it, I realized this is actually really fun and it's a really good game. I mean, obviously it's a good game, um, but, uh, I swear I'll, I st still really enjoy the game more than I thought I would at first. Um, it's, I feel like it takes a, a few steps forward, but also takes a few steps back. Because there's a lot of features in this that were in New Leaf, but not in here. Um, and they're still adding, like, I'm getting the impression that they're going to be adding more features to the game. Uh, through like free updates and stuff, uh, and I kind of wish games didn't do that. I kind of wish it was just complete out of the gate, <laughs> you know. Um, like New Leaf had like one big update like three years later from its uh, from its release. I don't know. That I just it's so whatever. I mean, like they announced like Red at the time of this video and they released it, and I'm like, cool. They added Red back to the game. So yeah, uh, Animal Crossing. Uh, it's good. Uh, just a little different. <clears throat> That's not a guaranteed bad thing, though. Uh, next game I got, uh, it's Luigi's Mansion 3. Uh, now I have a little bit of a strange history with Luigi's Mansion as a series. Um, I did not play the first game, even though I'm like, like a GameCube fanatic. I did, I, I, and even though I grew up with the GameCube, I didn't play the first game. Um, I didn't even know it was... <laughs> it wasn't even in my bubble at the time. But uh, I played Dark Moon. I got Dark Moon for Christmas, and it, and I really enjoyed Dark Moon. Like Dark Moon is the one that everyone's kind of eh about. But I I feel like me liking it, never having played the the first game. That I, I don't know. I guess that's why. I'm sure maybe if I grew up with the first game, I probably would have been eh about Dark Moon. But Dark Moon's honestly my favorite out of the, out of the three games. And I like this game. This game is also really really good. Like I'm not gonna deny that it's not really really good. I just, me personally, I haven't, I didn't really get, like, super, super into it, so I haven't finished it yet. It'll be finished one day. Um, but yeah, it's, it, I, I needed to get it anyway, so we just mentioned three. This is a port to the Switch. I don't know how many other consoles it's on. I know it's on PC, and I, I know that it was, like, huge on PC. Um, but of course, I, I, I love the Switch, so I got it on the Switch. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's Hat in Time. I got Hat in Time on Switch. Uh, I have barely put any time into this game, like, honestly, like, uh, but I do like, like, the few minutes that I've played so far, and I've heard it from other friends that this game is really, really good. 
I would say it's comparable to uh, Banjo Kazooie if you've never played this game before. Um, definitely worth definitely worth a shot. You know, like even though I've never really played it, I still I still think it's like worth your time. Um, it's not the perfect game, I and mean, of course it's not, but hat in time. Yes. So now we're gonna get into now we're gonna get into PS4. Um, we're gonna do this one first because I also haven't played it. That's uh, Persona 5 in the ugly PlayStation Hits case. Because um, what can I say? It was $20. <laughs> um, so, yes. Uh, I have not touched this game. And I have, in fact, never touched a Persona game in my life. I've never really had an interest. Because th those games have never really been in my like realm of interest. Uh, like RPGs, uh, school life, that kind of thing. Um, but everyone... When this game came out, everyone was talking about it. Everyone is still talking about it. So I, that kind of gave me like the hint, like maybe you should play this game. Um, so I got it, and maybe one day I'll. Wait, I mean, of course I'll try it, but uh, maybe, maybe, and maybe I'll get really into it. So this will just like sit on my shelf and like wait for me, th wait for that faithful day of me actually playing it. <laughs> yeah, Persona Five. Uh, I also got, and I have like three games in the ugly PlayStation Hits case, but another one that I got is Doom 2016. Uh, I, f I f when I got this, I, I, I've never really been huge in the first person shooter genre, but honestly I love Doom so much. I mean, I love the classic games. I've, I've played the classic games so much. It's, they're, they're so much fun to me. Um, so, uh, and I really wasn't into Doom 3, but once this game came out, I was like, I should probably try that out. Um, and yeah, I like it. I actually enjoy it. It's a pretty darn good game. I mean, like, what what else could be said about it at this point? Especially since, like, uh, Doom Eternal is out, and, uh, you know, I should probably get Doom Eternal too. Uh, so yeah, Doom. Doom 2016. Uh, this next one is Ratchet and Clank on the PS4. Um, everyone knows, or at, least I, or at least everyone should know, that I love Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and Clank is one of my favorite franchises. I played most of the games, and I love all of them. Um, but this one, sadly, this one is not in the love category. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that, and honestly, if, if anything, I can't- I'm not really one to say it, but... Basically, my entire thought process, believe it or not, is perfectly, like, shown in a video by the Gaming Brit Show. Uh, I'll probably put it in a card right there to give you, like, a link to it so you can watch it. Uh, it's, like, an hour long, but it's worth it. It's such a fun video. I love it. Um, but, yeah, uh, it's essentially boiled down, boils down to the game isn't as... doesn't have a, as much character as the original game, so... I've seen a lot of people, like, try to get into Ratchet and Clank using this game, and personally, I think that you should just buy the trilogy on PS3 or something. Just just play the PS2 games. Just, that's all I gotta say. Just play the PS2 games instead. Um, but not everyone has a PS3 lying around, I get it. But, uh, you know, whatever. Um, Alright, this next game, uh, this next game is LEGO City Undercover. Uh, I, I, when I played Grand, Th Grand Theft Auto V for the first time, in the last video, I mentioned that I had Grand Theft Auto V and it's just been sitting around, um, and I haven't really played it, and I have played it through its entirety, uh, in, like, the time period between the last games I got bought recently video and this one, um, and I, I loved it. It was, like, it's, like, one of my favorite games now. <laughs> um, so, of course, I was, like, I really want to get into more open world game stuff, even though they're, like, for kids. Um, and it's, and I actually really enjoy this game. It's, it's pretty good. I mean, most of these games, like, well, my only opinion is it's pretty good. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's something. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's, like, I'm not really, I'm not too big into Lego games, but of course I saw this for like 20 bucks and I'm like, it really wouldn't hurt and I need more game, I, and I need more games for my PS4. I can't just watch Twitch on it all day. So there's that. Yeah, Lego City. This, this is our last PS4 one. Uh, and this one, I have, a, I have a few things to say about it. Uh, it's black sad under the skin with its fancy, this is like the limited edition um, the, with the lenticular cover and like the weird uh, cards that come with it. Um, like that, it comes with cards. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Um, so yeah, what can I say about this game besides I really, really enjoyed what I've played so far. 
Um, it's, I mean, I love the Black Sad comics. That's what Black Sad is. It's, it's, like, it's like a comic series. Um, so I feel like you should read those before playing this because this has like a lot of references to the comics that only the comic readers would, would get. Um, and I feel like that would also trigger like the full enjoyment of this game. Um, uh, but a sad part of this game is it's very unpolished and rough and there's a lot of glitches in it. Um, like, very bad glitches. Like, glitches that will stop you from proceeding in the game. Um, glitches that will cause you to have to restart. Yeah, uh, it's really bad. <laughs> and not a lot of people can stand for that, but me personally, I have- I, I, I had a lot of patience when playing it because I was enjoying what I was doing. I was enjoying what I was playing. So, honestly, I'm like, I'm willing to stick through with the glitches. It, it just sucks that they haven't, like, been, like, patched out or whatever. It, it's just- it's like- this game has been out since, oh god, I don't even know, like, I want to say, like, 2019, 2018. It's been out for a while. It's been out for a long time. Um, at least, at least, like, a time where you would expect there to be a patch, but there has not. So, I still recommend this game if you can stand the glitches. Because you will run into them. Now we're gonna go into some PS3 games. Uh, we're going down in the, we're going backwards in time, uh, game generations. Uh, this first one here is another Ratchet and Clank game. Uh, this is Tools of Destruction, and now this is really, of course, obviously this is this obviously isn't a new game, and this is actually one of the first. This is actually the first HD Ratchet and Clank game. Um, this was like the next gen, future Ratchet and Clank game, um, and this is actually one of my favorite Ratchet and Clank games. Like honestly, um, I, I I've been wanting to play it again recently, um, so maybe I'll crack it out again. But, uh, it's, it, it's, I mean, it, it, it definitely shows its age, um, but that doesn't mean that it's not a fun game to play. That's the great thing about this game, is that the gameplay is amazing. The game, like, just take out the story, all the gimmicks, the gameplay is all you really need, and honestly, like, doing the, getting the weapons and destroying everything, it's just, it's, oh, it's so fun and satisfying. This game is satisfying. <laughs> but yeah, I finally got my own copy of it, um, uh, so yeah, I I love this game. And again, the story is like hit or miss, and there's a lot of gimmicky stuff since it was when the, at a time when the when the PS3 was like new. So like 2007 ish was when this game came out. Um, but I still think it's worth your time if you like Ratchet and Clank. It's a good game, you know. It doesn't really live up to, live up to the original trilogy, but it's it's still good. It's still good. So here we go. Uh, okay, so here we go. Here is the sequel the sequel to Tools of Destruction. That, that, that is a crack in time. Now this game I actually played years before I played Tools of, uh, Tools of Destruction um, And I would say that this is one of the best Ratchet and Clank games period um, I just I love it so much. There's so much. There's so many cool things in it um, There's so many good ideas in it. The story is also kind of hit or miss. There's a lot of weird stuff going on like you know, in the first game, you know, it's, I mean, spoilers, I guess, but in the first game, Clank is just like a defect. He's like a robot defect made from, from a robot's factory. You know, he just happened out of chance. Um, but in this game, it's shown that, like, he has, like, a father that runs, like, the the big uh, clock, the great clock, you know, because this game is about time travel. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's, like, it's like this weird thing. It's like, why, it's like, why does Clank suddenly have a father? He was just a weird robot defect, and that kind of made him more, you know, that kind of that kind of made him more like relatable. Um, but I digress. <laughs> maybe maybe I'll talk more in depth about that uh, later on. Uh, but still, regardless of the weird choices and the weird story, um, I would play uh, Tools of Destruction before you play this game. Um, but those two are definitely worth your time. These games are really good. Um, so yeah. Uh, crack in time. Fix this next game. So last time I bought, last time I showed off uh, Sonic Boom Race of Lyric, um, and that game is known for being very glitchy, uh, not being one of the worst games re like released that year, <laughs> and like being rushed out for the holidays. So it was like put out in November, like oh your kids buy it. <laughs> uh, uh, so, you kind of have to wonder, like, what other Sonic game has that fate, and what other Sonic game is also known to be glitchy and disastrous. Yes, believe it or not, I'm a huge Sonic fan, and I have yet to even buy 
Sonic 06. Uh, uh, yeah. So, I have Sonic 06 now, and yes, I do have, have it on the PS3. I don't care what anyone says. Um, it's a glitchy- it's apparently a glitchy hell anyway, so there's like no difference. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I don't think it's that bad on the PS3. I mean, I haven't really heard anything. No one talks about this game besides, like, constantly trashing it for, like, however many reasons that it's it's garbage or whatever. But honestly, knowing me and knowing how I enjoyed Rise of Lyric, I'll probably enjoy this game as well just because I love Sonic. Like, that's the only reason why. I just love Sonic! And, you know, I can, I can deal with stuff in games and, you know, whatever. So, uh, I still have not played this game. Um, I feel like it's like such like a big thing, you know, that I kind of want to like capture my first mo moments with it in in like a stream or something. So even though that's like far off into the future, you know, who knows how long it'll be until that happens. But I'm willing to wait <laughs> until I'll until I'm able to do that because that will be a lot of fun. Um, so I'm probably going to wait till until I'm able to do that for sure. So, uh, yeah, here we go. Sonic 06. Uh, okay, so these are these are two Wii games, and then we're gonna go into, like, PS2 and stuff. Um, so the first one I have to show is Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games. Uh, I've, so, so I've heard that this is actually, this is actually the two Winter Games ones, the ones on the Wii and the one on DS, which I actually had, I grew up with the one on DS, so, and I did not have the console version. Um, and he won't believe- and I, I found this at Goodwill, um, at like my pound store Goodwill, like down the, down the road before all this stuff happened. That's gonna date the video, but whatever. Before all that cra all this crap happened, um, and it was open, uh, like I found this and it cost me 50 cents. And I- and it was like, it was complete, the disc was in great condition, uh, just- I- it's steel. I essentially stole this game from them. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was a really, really cool find, um, and it works great. Uh, if you ever want to try out the Olympic Games, just try out, like, the, the two Winter Olympic ones. Those are the ones to go for. Um, th those are, like, the best ones, because everything else is, like, okay at best. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, Olympic Winter Games. Now this is, this is another mainline, mainline Sonic game that I've yet to ever play, um, up until, like, recently, um, even though I've been a Sonic fan for like years. Um, yeah, I found this really, really cheap on eBay. Um, the only thing was, was the case was a little bit cracked, but I had a, but I had a replacement. So it's a nice, fresh replacement case. And yeah, it looks good. Uh, the game plays all right. Um, and you know, no, no disc scratches or anything. So like I paid like $3 for this game. <laughs> like I said, it was essentially that. Um, so yeah, it was really cheap. Uh, and I'm glad to add, finally add it to, to the collection because I feel like I, for me personally, I want I want to get almost every single Sonic game um, because I just you know this, and this is just like one of the mainline ones that I've yet to even have or even play for like the longest time. Um, so I think this is I think as of right now this is the last like mainline Sonic game that I'm that I need to get for my collection. Um, and yeah, as for the game itself, it's okay. I mean, you know, it's a Sonic game. <laughs> There really isn't much to say about that. So now we're gonna get into the stuff that I'm most excited for, um, which is probably PlayStation 2, because I love the PlayStation 2. PlayStation 2 is probably it's probably my favorite console of all time. Uh, so last time I mentioned that I got Sly, er, Sly Ty the Tasmanian Tiger for the PS2, because uh, I've you know Ty has always eluded me for years. Um, I knew that I, it was the kind of game that I would enjoy, and, and I was right. Um, and I also mentioned that there were uh, sequels. Um, there were three sequels back in the day, and there was like an extra the weird little side-scrolling side one um, I mentioned in the previous video. But yes, uh, I finally have, well finally, I mean I have both of the sequels on PS2. Um, uh, I believe I, I haven't really played these honestly. I, I, I want to play all the way through Ty One before I finish, before I start the sequels. Uh, but I have tried them and they do seem like bigger and better and all that good stuff. Uh, I found this one in like my mom and pop shop, um, my local mom, mom and pop game shop. Um, uh, and I feel I think when I got there and I saw this, I think that was when they first got the game in. 
Um, so, and I was able to get a really good deal on it because they had like a little sale going on. Um, and it was in really good condition and I was just so happy about that. Uh, so yes, tie two. And then tie three is a little interesting um, because like the version of the PS2 version, in my experience and looking for it, um, the PS2 version isn't really as uh, common as like the GameCube version. Um, so I was really, it was kind of hard for me to find like a good price on it. So I want to say I paid like, I, I, like from like from what I've looked, it's, it was like priced it over like thirty dollars, and I'm like, um. so uh, I play, I think I paid like a, I think I paid like half that uh, for this uh, for the PS2 copy because I was like I'm gonna write all the way out because because it, it would drive me absolutely insane if I had to get a third game on GameCube or whatever. Like just screw that, man. Just, so yeah, luckily I was able to get all three games on PS2. Um, I just I wouldn't be able to take that. Okay, so this we have a next little series going on right here. Um, it's another popular, you know, early two thousands platformer, and then I think after that, no, no, I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll get to all that. We'll just I'm moving ahead of myself. Uh, we got Pac Man World two. Uh, I heard this game was really good, and yes, I agree, it's really good. It's it's essentially Pac-Man, but you're platforming, um, and the first game was released on PS1, so I'll have to probably go after that eventually, uh, but I just got, uh, I just got two, um, and three. I got two and three, um, and this one, this, I played a little bit of this one, it's really good. Also played a little bit of this one to make sure that, that the disc worked, um, and it did, luckily. Uh, and this is all the, this is also the one where they had... Don Bluth, of all people, designed some of the enemies and the characters in the game, um, and, then, and then they also gave Pac-Man a voice. There's voice acting in this game, and honestly, I think he sounds like what I think, what, you, you know, you'd assume that he would sound like, so it's, but it's a little strange, because it's like, oh, Pac-Man World 2, he just, he was just silent, and Pac-Man World 1, he was silent, so why now give him a voice? It's just weird. Um, but they're both decent games. Uh, I would I, I would honestly recommend Pac-Man Roll 2. Uh, go up to the, go play this one uh, for something different to play. You know, all that good stuff. So yeah. Uh, okay. So we have some some other games on the and then we're gonna go to licensed games. So yes, we have some other games to go through before we get to licensed games. Um, we have this one here, Super Busta Move 2. Uh, it's a puzzle game, it's a really, with a bunch of really colorful characters, and that's what attracted me to get this. Um, I did not buy this. I was given this, uh, essentially. I was just like, here, just take it, you know? Uh, so, I have a mom and a stepdad, uh, and they were getting rid of a bunch of their games. Um, well, I just, I brought it up, and I'm like, you, you, you know, you have all these games on PS3, you know, really... You, do you really want to keep these? And my mom really doesn't really care about video game collecting like I do. So she just like let me have them. <laughs> so I used them to trade, and they were, most of them were games that I already had, so I used them to trade in to the uh, local game store, um, and I was able to get like some traded money. Um, and I went on the field day that day. <laughs> but uh, this is this is one of the games that I did, that I did not have and I decided to keep. Um, so um, honestly, I, pr I probably won't even really play this a whole all that much, so later on I might get rid of it. But I still wanted to show it off because I, I love the cover of it and I love, you know, the graphics of the game and the music. And it's just it's like this is, I it just it, it it appealed to me. But I'm not really much of a puzzle game person, um, so maybe that'll stay in the collection. Maybe it won't. Like you know, it's um, uh, yeah. Let's just move on. Um, so this next game is a little strange. Um, I don't really have much to say about it, except that it's a, another weird little quirky platformer for the PS2. Um, it's called Kia, or Kaya, I'm just going to say Kia, like uh, the car dealership, but uh, Kia uh, the dark, and the Dark Lineage. Um, or Kia, Dark Lineage, that's all that there is, like, no end though. <laughs> but yeah, it's just a weird little platformer um, that I heard about from Nitro Rad, so it's another card that I'll probably put up in the corner. Um, or actually, you know what, my thing is flipped, so... It's probably gonna be right there. So yeah, the last card that I pointed out, it's probably gonna be right there, because my perception is a little bit flipped. But yeah, this is another little quirky thing. Um, 
Uh, I just know that it's like this girl and her brother gets teleported to like another dimension and like her, her brother gets kidnapped and she has to save him and like a bunch of cat people that she runs into. Yeah, and you just go on an adventure, you know, with cat people. Because that's how it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's another little, little game that I just wouldn't really hurt to add to my collection. Uh, another game that no one's heard of either, so, you know, whatever. Here's another game I feel like no one really talks about or even has even heard of. Uh, this is Scalar for the PS2. Uh, and so it was released on Xbox and GameCube as well, but I got PS2 because I love the PS2. Uh, most of my platformers are on PS2. Um, but yeah, this is another weird little quirky game um, that just it just came out and no one ever talked about it again. Um, uh, it's where you're a dude and you're being targeted by like the military for whatever the fucking reason. Probably for like sneaking in or knowing too much about something and you're turned into a lizard man and you're t teleported to this world full of lizards. Uh, cause you're obs cause you're obsessed with lizards or whatever. Um, you're doing like a lot of grinding, like grind rail from Ratchet and Clank. That's like the gimmick of the game. But yeah, what I played about uh, what I played with this game is pretty good. Uh, just something some, something new to try. You never know. Um, you could be really into it. Uh, so yeah, just I hope that I gave you some recommendations just now. Um, so we're gonna get into the licensed games. Um, we got a lot of licensed games. I mean, more than you would think. Uh, but I'm gonna bring this up. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna bring this next one up really quickly. Uh, so this next one, um, uh, one day I was going. I had to mail something out, so I had to. So I had to, to take the bus, and I had to. And I mailed something. And on the way there, on the way to uh, my bus stop, is a pawn shop. Uh, so I decided, screw it. I have like an hour to kill. So I went. I went into the pawn shop. Um, and I, and, you know, I figured maybe I'll have like a couple like old games, um, and they did, but most of them were stuff that I already had, and then, and then I looked into, into their, uh, like 99 cent pile, um, and they had this. Alright, Kate and Ashley, Sweet 16, License to Drive. So, yeah, um, this game was a dollar, but I went up to, to the lady, and I, you know, I figured I, I was... I've heard about this game with so many people, people that, I, that I love to watch, um, so I know this game like more than I probably should. <laughs> uh, so I just said, screw it, I, I want it, I'm gonna get it because it's a dollar, screw it. Um, and it would make people weird, weird out, you know, whatever. Um, so, uh, and honestly I figured I'm gonna regret it if I don't get it. So yeah, I got it, and the lady was like, and I didn't have any cash on me, so I gave my card to the lady, and she was like, "I really don't. I don't. I don't. I don't want to charge a card for a dollar." Um, and I was like, "I don't have any cash," and she was like, "Just take it." She, she was like, "Screw it. It's on the house." <laughs> so, so yeah, I essentially got this game for free, um, and so I guess no harm, no no harm done, nothing lost <laughs> for such a shitty game. Yeah, this game is kind of trash. Uh, like, even though I have low standards, um, this game is boring. This game is boring. Like with Sonic, I would rather I would rather play Sonic 06 and boom and, and like a Rise of Lyric than this because those games I could be entertained, but this game is just bad and boring, which is the worst combination. Uh, so it's like a Mario Party clone if you've never seen it before and you play some weird mini games. There's a bunch of girl stereo like there's a bunch of teenage girl stereotypes in this game. Yeah, just no bother. Like watch other people play it or whatever. Okay, so we got some other licensed games that we can go through. Um, first one we got up, like movie licensed games, first one is Ice Age 2 Meltdown. Uh, I actually heard from somewhere that, that, that this is actually a pretty decent platformer, and I agree, it's a pretty okay. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's, 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 it's a pretty okay platformer. Uh, it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's your token license game. I mean, you know, not all license games are gonna be horrible, like horrible trash garbage like Mary-Kate and Ashley, but, uh, it's, you know, a lot of them are, I won't deny that. But this one, this one's pretty okay. This one's pretty decent. Uh, so, there we go. And I just, I love license games, so I just, I got it just because, uh, yeah. You know another one? Wally. Nothing much to say about it, except uh, I saw that it was my made by the same people who also worked on the Ratatouille game, which I grew up with. Uh, so that kind of attracted me to buy this so quickly, and that it was also like for sitting around my, in my game store. So I'm like, screw it, I'm gonna get that too. 
Uh, so yeah, I got Wally, Wally for PS2. Just you know, you know, you, you look at these games and you're like, what kind of game is that? Like what kind of like what would you what what are you doing? So that's that's what always attracts me to those games to these games is that they're just they're strange and you never know what you're gonna find in them. Uh, it's another game. It's Bolt for PS2. Bolt is a forgotten Disney movie, I would say. It's definitely, uh, you know, not a lot of people talk about it. Uh, it's not like Pixar or anything. It's like Disney themselves. Uh, and this was actually one of my favorite movies growing up. So I figured, I saw it and I'm like, I kind of need to have the game now. <laughs> I need to have the game. So I got the game and it's, it's okay. It's another okay one. It's just, it's no harm done. You know, it's not like the worst thing in the world. Um, but if you've never seen Bolt before, uh, it's about a dog who who grows up thinking that he's like a super powered dog because he's he's a star of a TV show, um, and he thinks that he's actually super powered. Um, uh, and the manual for the game is made made look like a television like a episode script, so that's pretty neat. That's a nice little touch. I noticed that, and I was like, hey, look at that. Uh, it's almost done here. Uh, here we have another one called Zathura. It's another licensed game movie tie-in, uh, and I hope I, I just I reminded you that Zerthura is a thing, because uh, I sure as hell forgot when I saw this, I was like, oh yeah, there's a game for that? There's so many licensed games where you're just like, there's a game for this? <laughs> like, what could that be like? Uh, so yeah, it's just another like shitty platformer. Just, it's just They're all platformers. They're all like crappy platformers. So whatever. Um, uh, and you, if you don't know what Zathura is, Zathura is like an early 2000s movie, like 2005, 2004-ish, somewhere around there. Um, and it's about a couple of kids who find a board game, and of course their dad is not home, so they find a board game and they start playing it, um, and just like actual stuff from the board game starts happening and they get teleported to space and shenanigans ensue. It's a pretty creepy and dark movie. I really didn't like it when growing up because it creeped me out, but... Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'd rather play the- honestly, personally, I'd rather play this a third game than watch the movie. <laughs> and that's saying something that I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying the movie's bad, just me personally, I just- I would rather play the game. Uh, but yeah, so third, just another weird one to the collection. And the last one, the last game we have for today, you know, uh, Family Guy. Family Guy the game. Yeah, I mean, you see me buy Zathura, you see me buy Wally. -E. Why would I not have Family Guy? It, it'll just complete everything. Um, real talk though, this move, this game is set. This game is like set up like it's a TV episode, and I kind of like that touch. I mean, of course, obviously, you would think that it would be, but you would also think that maybe it would just be like a crappy like, oh, it's a normal day in the Griffin household. No, there's like, there's, it's like an actual television series. It's, a, it's like an actual te television episode. Uh, so I'm not really into Family Guy, but I just, it's like, this game's like too like weird to pass up. Uh, and it says on the back, it says it's too hot for TV. Um, I'm guessing it's like raunchier stuff than usual in this game. Um, I don't know, I could be wrong on that. You know, you Family Guy experts tell me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's really all, all the games. That's all the games. I have a lot of games. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching, that's for sure. Uh, and it's weird that I've managed to hit the exact same, like, minute <laughs> than, the lo than the first time I tried recording this, so yes. Uh, hope you enjoyed me watching me ramble about these games. I, I love collecting games, um, you know, to and I hope to stream one day. That's like the main reason why I'm getting all these, like, weird games. It's like, I want to stream and talk about these games, uh, especially the licensed ones, because licensed license games are like my favorite game to collect. Uh, so yeah, uh, hope we'll see you around, I guess. It's been me, Terra Drive. See you around. Bye.